Uh, hello, fellows and ladies. Um, I am about to do a year in advance Oscar prediction video because I do not have a fucking backbone. I can't just let the Oscars happen for five minutes. Just nope, nope, next year now. So uh, I'm just for so for clarity, I'm not doing the text. Just fuck that noise. I'm not really, you know, I'm not really doing the. I'm not. I'm, I'm not really focusing on the Oscars right now. You know. Like, I'm mainly focusing on the Emmys, but, you know, I want views. <laughs> I want the views. This is all a ploy for views. And also, I'm also, I'm only doing picture, director, and then the four acting categories. I'm going to try and zoom through these because I don't want this to be like an hour long. I don't know. Depending how long it goes, I might split it up to a couple of videos. And I'm going to, and for picture, I'm going to name my top 20. And then for directing and acting, I'm going to name my top 15. All right, let's get to it. It's all in here, so... All right, let's start off with best picture. Also, just really quickly, I don't know if you can hear my fan or not. I don't know if you can, but I'm keeping it on because I have a fucking ring light in my face. It's hot in here already. I'm keeping the fucking fan on. <laughs> Start off with best picture. Number one is The Fablemans. I don't think I need to explain this one. This is directed by Steven Spielberg, written by him and Tony Kushner. It's basically touted as his Belfast. It's about like his childhood. I don't, this is one of those ones where I'm like, you know why? You know why this is number one. Number two, uh, Babylon. I mean, again, this is another one where I'm like, you guys get it. Like, if, you, if you're if you if you, you're into like the award stuff, you know why this is in here. This is directed by Gamey Chazelle, has a lot of fucking actors in it. Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, Gene Smart, fucking Jeff Garland, everyone's favorite. Yeah, no, it's about old Hollywood. I don't, I, I, I don't see a reason why I wouldn't predict this. I know he did First Man, so I guess that's a reason why not to, but I'm going to anyway. Also, it just test screened pretty phenomenal. Number three, Killers of the Flower Moon, directed by Marty Scorsese. I'm not even gonna. I, <laughs> Marty Scorsese, like this is like apparently like a like an FBI movie, like a detective movie. I don't know. Maybe it's like I, it could be like a Shutter Island situation. I mean, I guess it could, but I'm not gonna bet on that. Especially like the cast includes Jesse Plemons, Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio, and the King Brendan Fraser. Probably like a small role, but still the King. Also, it's written by Eric Roth, who like Duke gets nominated. He was just nominated for Dune. He was nominated for Star Is Born. Two screenplays that's like they didn't need to get nominated, but they did anyway. Anyway, I should probably the plot: members of the Osage tribe in northeastern Oklahoma are murdered under mysterious circumstances in the 1920s, sparking a major FBI investigation. Directed by 29-year-old J. Edgar Hoover and former Texas Ranger Tom White. So yeah, uh, yeah. Could this be a Shutter Island situation? I guess it's not impossible. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but I'm, in what planet would I bet against this? Although, to be fair, uh, I, I did hear recently that it is undergoing reshoots early next month, so it could be delayed, but for now, I'm keeping it right here. Number four, this is when it gets less obvious. After, the, after, after that top three, I think it just let, gets less obvious but let's get to number four. Number four, I have She Said. I I don't know. I think a part of me wants to say this is just as easy as the other three I mentioned. Because this is about the two women who basically broke the fucking Harvey Weinstein scandal. It, it's a kind of, I feel like it's going to be like spotlight, but in Hollywood, it's like, <laughs> I feel like voters are just be like, oh, well, yeah. Like, I feel like voters are just going to look at that and be like, oh, okay, yeah, obviously. Come on. So it's Carrie Mulligan and Zoe Kazan as the two women who broke the scandal. The movie is directed by Maria Schrader, not the Breaking Bad one, who directed, like, a couple episodes of, like, that show Unorthodox, and she won an Emmy for it, too. So, like, you know, I like I like the thought of this uh, lady here. It's also written by Rebecca Lankwit. Lankwit, and that, and fuck that, just, that, that word, that, that's the writer, too, who wrote some pretty good stuff, including Colette, which I haven't seen it, but I heard it's pretty good. All right, number five, Empire of Light. Now, I was told about this movie, and I was, I was like, oh, Sam Mendes, like, okay, well, I don't know if he gets nominated for everything. And then I read the synopsis of the film. It says, a love story that takes place in an English coastal cinema during the 1980s. So yeah, I saw that. I was like, okay, well, yeah, that's, that's getting in. It stars Olivia Coleman, Colin Firth, Michael Ward. I don't know the placements of these actors yet, but they're in it. <laughs> Michael Ward, I believe, won something, like a BAFTA. So, yeah, he won the Rising Star Award in 2020. Yeah, I mean, 
I, I don't think Sam Mendes just gets nominated for everything, but like, come on, he's hot off in 1917, and this is the plot of the movie. Like, it has to be Spectre to not be good, to not get nominated, you know? Like, all right, number six, next goal wins. I'm sticking with it. I predicted it in 2020. It got delayed because of COVID. I predicted the next year I got delayed because of Army. And now this year, nothing's in its way. I know it tested recently. I wasn't able to hear anything, but it tested. And I mean, like, I Taika is just, like, he's just a force in the industry right now. He's doing Marvel. Apparently, he's doing Star Wars, I think, like, soon. It had Michael Fassbender and Michael Elizabeth Moss. Like, it, you know, not, not that Army Hammer's, like, that, you know. It, he, I know he's Army Hammer, but, like, before we knew about him, like, you know, his eating habits. Um, like, he was, like, you know, it was, like, that's not, like, those were not the kind of actors who just pick some random comedy. There had to be something in this. And, you know, like, and kind of like Jojo, he just won the screenplay for Jojo Rabbit. So, like, you know, it might be, like, a very, like, feel-good, tiff-winner movie. I'm not underestimating it. I'm seeing a lot of you do that. And I you don't really get it. Number seven, Bardo. Not much is known about this movie, except for the fact that Alejandro Gonzalez Inaritu directed it. Is there a plot? There is not currently a plot synopsis, but like it is a it is a Spanish language film directed by Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu. Two directing wins in a row for Birdman: The Revenant. This is his first movie since The Revenant. I'm not gonna underestimate it. Like, why the fuck would I do that? Oh, okay. So apparently, it is about a Mexican journalist. Okay, that's something. I don't know. Again, it, it, it might it's a comedy movie, but like. You know, it won't be like a slapstick comedy. You know what I mean? Like, it won't be just Mexican Jim Carrey. Yeah, so yeah, I I, I, I think this is going to get in. I, I, It might be too low, honestly. <laughs> so literally, and I mean quite literally, as I'm editing this video, uh, it was announced that Bardo got picked up by Netflix. So yeah, it, I, that was definitely too low. Just know it's now my number five in picture. And then next goal wins is now my seven. Empire Life's now my six. All right, moving on. Uh, number eight, Don't Worry Darling. This might be too high for some of you, and I understand that. But to me, Warner Brothers does not really have a lot on their plate this year. And Don't Worry Darling, like, Olivia, what Booksmart was close to getting a screenplay nod. Like, it got WJ, it got BAFTA, like, it was close. And, and this is like a psychological thriller, sure, but like, I don't know, it feels like the premise does kind of seem like it could be really weird. It could be, and I could take it off. Like, this isn't, I, if, if you've been knowing me for a while, you know, last year I went all in on last night in Soho. That was a fuck up on my end. But, um, but this looks, this is my redemption right here. This is my redemption. If I commit, say, the premise of this film, an unhappy housewife in the 1950s discovers a disturbing truth while her loving husband hides a dark secret. It doesn't sound that Austria, but like, look, the Oscars have been very open to outsider things recently. You know, like the fucking fish sex movie one, like they're clearly open to shit like this. Like this might, could this be like too weird? Sure. But I, I don't know. I, I, I like the looks of it so far. Number nine, let's fucking go boys. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm doing it. <laughs> I just like, I, when I remember when I, I, before I saw the film, I saw some buzz and I was like, oh, interesting. And then I saw the movie. I'm like, um, are you what? I talked about this a little bit in my review. If you want to go check that out, but initially I was like, "You fucking crazy," and then it slowly started to stick with me. I'm noticing how like unanimous this movie is. Like, I haven't seen a lot of people like not like this movie. And it's one thing to like everyone seems to like unbearable weight of massive talent, but like that seems to be just like, oh, that's just an entertaining time. Everything, everywhere, all at once is a different story. People are like calling it a, like so many 10 out of 10s, five out of fives, just leading letterbox. That's a nine on IMDb still. I think it's like the highest, I forget what it said, but I think it's like the highest on Rotten Tomatoes, I believe, like of the decade, which you know, not take too much, but still. So yeah, it is really weird. It has a lot of obstacles. That's why I have it at nine. But like, I think it can overcome it. Like if it's, if it's like just unanimously agreed to be like the best, why not? Could it win? I'm not going there. Fuck that noise. <laughs> uh, number 10, Armageddon Time. I, I remember when I was like, I heard about this, like, oh, James Gray movie, Armageddon Time, maybe get this picture. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? Like, this dude's never got an Oscar on this. Why now? I thought, I don't know, Armageddon Time. I was like, oh, it's another fucking sci-fi movie by the dude. Then I looked it up and it's like, oh, it's a personal movie. Okay. 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 Ever since I found out what Armageddon Time was, it's been stuck with me. This could, I feel like James Gray is one of those directors, like, he's got a 
jump in eventually, right? And this is a cast, and, and, and this is a pretty decent cast too. Anne Hathaway, Anthony Hopkins, Jeremy Strong. Okay, I, I think I overhyped the cast. Apparently, Kate Blanchett did it too, though. That's pretty cool. It, it, it was announced this morning that it's going to Cannes. So that's, you know, we're going to find out pretty soon if it's a thing or not. But like, I don't know. It, it, I'm liking the sound of it so far. All right, now we're off the top 10. I'm going to start doing my 11 through 20, and then I'll go on to the next category. I don't know how long I've been recording for. Um, number, man, this might be too high. Fuck, this is too high, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever. Number 11 is The Banshees of Inishirin. This is written and directed by Martin McDonough, right off of, uh, you know, uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Dude, the premise, a conflict between two friends arrives. One of them abruptly ends their friendship. Alarming consequences for both of them. I don't know what the hell this movie is, but I don't know. Sounds pretty cool. Starting Brendan Gleeson, Colin Farrell, Barry Keoghan, Carrie Condon. Everyone's favorite, Carrie Condon. I don't know who that is. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think Martin McDonough is just like, oh, he, he just gets nominated now. I don't think that's the position he's in. But like, I don't know. It's by searchlight. He could get some buzz again. It could happen again. I don't know. I, I, admittedly, I think it's, just, I, I put this way too high. Next up. Y'all know this is Gelman. I got The Whale. This is directed by Darren Aronofsky. It's based off a play, but most importantly, it stars the king, Brendan Fraser. The Whale is about a 600-pound middle-aged man named Charlie tries to reconnect with his 17-year-old daughter. The duo grew apart after Charlie abandoned his family for his gay lover who later died. Charlie then went on to binge eat out of pain and guilt. This, I have heard that this film is going to be toned down. Aronofsky. This isn't Mother. You know, Brendan Fraser ain't going all Christian on us. But I don't know. I don't I don't ever shit about Mother. I didn't like it. But like it, it is A24. They might have a little, they might, you know, prioritize Brendan Fraser and then everything everywhere all once in picture. I don't know. But like if Brendan Fraser really is like, you know, gonna do a lot of damage an actor, like I suspect he could, I'll get to that. Um, I can see this being a best picture player. It is based off a play that's a little just a little alarming, but you know. It could happen. It could. Darren Aronofsky, like, listen, I know I'll get to that in director. Number 13, I got Cha-Cha Real Smooth. Um, I'm seeing a lot of you underestimate this movie. And I'm like, man, did you not, did, did you forget what just one best picture? This is direct, written and directed by Cooper Reif. It actually premiered at Sundance to really, like, rave reviews. I was not able to catch it. But it's apparently a coming-of-age movie. And, uh, man, I don't know. Like, if it's really that good, why can't it just coda? Like, maybe not win, but, like, you know, I, and I know Apple also has uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, but, it's like, bro, you think Apple can't afford to get two movies into Best Picture? What do you mean? Like, it, it, Coda just won Best Picture. A movie like Coda just won, let alone fucking nomination. I mean, I, I don't have it in the den, so clearly I, I'm not, I'm also, like, not confident. But, like, I, I'm not going to underestimate it. Fuck that noise. I know it's coming out in June, but it's like, dude, like, that happened. It's happened. All right, number 14, Canterbury Glass. Honestly, this is too low. This is too low. It might be, I'm hearing mixed things out of uh, test screenings, but like, I don't know, man, it could be like a don't look up kind of situation where like, it's just kind of inevitable. It's, the movie's written and directed by uh, David or Russell, who, you know, they like the guy, <laughs> you know? It's a period film starring... <coughs> Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, John David Washington, Rami Malek, Zoe Saldana, Robert De Niro, Mike Myers, Timothy Timothy Elephant, uh, what, what was the joke? The man in the bubble? I don't care. Michael Shannon, Chris Rock, Andy Taylor Joy, Andrea Risenboro, Matt Mattia. Okay, we're getting to the people no one cares about. Oh, but and also Taylor Swift. <laughs> like, but dude, I, it might just be don't look out. Like it might just be inevitable. I, I guess the, the issue is, I, I, you know, David Russell, like some shit has come up since his last film which could be a problem for him obviously but it might affect him personally not the movie man yeah no i, I might have made a mistake this should be higher shouldn't it shit number 15 i got 13 lives this is a movie about the soccer team of stuck in a cave uh basically it was th that documentary the rescue remember that one it's basically a movie version of that directed by ron howard starring bigger mortensen colin farrell it could happen apparently it tests and you know ron howard's a little bit on timeout recently with between solo and hillbilly elegy but i don't know man this movie apparently tested extremely well so much so that it moved from august to like a more award-friendly date so that's really good i don't know it might be a little too cheesy i do think 
I firmly believe that there is such a thing as too baity, but I it's definitely worth considering at the very least, you know? And I don't want to hear like, oh, too baity, what about Green Book? No, no, no. Green Book was baity enough. Number 16, The Sun. I am I'm almost certain a lot of you are like, dude, put this higher. And you might be right, but I, The Sun... Like, I get why. It's the same director of The Father. It's another adaptation of one of his plays. It starts Hugh Jackman, Lawrence, and Vanessa Kirby. Like, bruh. I, I get it. I do. I, I, I totally understand why you guys are... I totally understand why you guys are predicting this movie. My thing is, I don't know if The Father would have been able to accomplish what it accomplished in a non-COVID year. That is my only problem. I totally believe that this movie could happen. It's in the 20. Obviously, I think it's possible. But, like... Is it, though? For now, I'm going to say no, other than, like, acting and screenplay. It's possible. Like, remember, the father, like, did it, like, the father had a very interesting award season. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it missed a lot of precursors, but also got in a lot of precursors. It was weird. Uh, and then, obviously, it ended with Hopkins winning. And this is Sony Pictures Classic, so it's definitely worth considering for sure. Um, I just, for the time being, I'm going to, you know, proceed with caution on the sun. Number 17 is, uh, look, a lot of you guys have this higher. I get it. It's women talking. <sighs> I don't know. I, I just, something about this is not clicking with me like it is everyone else. For one, I hear the movie is a little mess. Like, that's a problem. But the book is pretty, like, it, the movie is literally just women talking. That doesn't, like, One Night Miami couldn't get nominated. You know what I mean? Like, mass wasn't even close. And, and to be fair, this has a really great cast. It's about assault. Sarah Pauly, she is a nominee, I believe. Um, who, she's writing and directing this. Um, Francis McDormand, uh, Rooney Mara, Jesse Buckley. It's a good cast. It's just, I don't know. But also, but what really made me, like, I had a little bit higher, and then I put a lot lower after I heard that this movie is a little dry and that it might divide some people. And with She Said, uh, dealing with a very similar subject, but it might, uh, in a way that might appeal more so to the Academy. I don't know. I just, I, I just can't buy this film right now. And uh, maybe it'll change. It could have, like, a really great festival run. I believe that. But for the time being, I'm going to I'm going to be on the outs on women talking. Number 18, the greatest beer run ever. <laughs> Movie is directed and written by Peter Fairley. Hot off of his just universally beloved best picture winner, Green Book. This is another one of those things. Where I'm like, oh, fuck, is it inevitable? No, I'm not as sure. And I'm, I just want to clarify before I go on that. I'm not one of those people who just hate Green Book. I thought it was a perfectly I thought it was a great movie. Did it deserve to win Best Picture? Absolutely not. I also understand how it could be considered harmful, but it's not a bad movie. That being said, something about this, it might be less like it it might it might be like Stillwater. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I know he just won Best Picture, but it could be a Stillwater situation. I don't know why I'm getting that vibe here. Let me tell you the plot. In 1967, John Donahue was a 26-year-old US Marine Corps veteran working as a merchant seaman. Uh, when he was challenged one night in a New York City bar, challenged what? the men gathered had lost family and friends in the ongoing war in Vietnam. One friend proposed an idea many might deem preposterous. One of them should sneak into Vietnam, track down the buddies in combat, and give each of them messages of support from back home and maybe some laughs and beer. This might be one of the most fucking like cheesy shit ever made, man. It's starring Zach Efron, star Vanessa Crow, and Bill Murray. I. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this movie. I might, right, right now I'm going off the, not, the idea that it is fucking Stillwater, but it might be inevitable. All right, number 19 and number 20, I'm, it kind of lumped together. I'm going to start with number 19, which is The Batman. I, I Like I said, Warner Bros. doesn't have a lot on their plates this year. This might be wishful thinking, but like The Batman could do really well with text. And it's like, it's a somewhat, I don't agree with this take, but it is an interesting one. It, it has the Text of Joker with a much better script. I, I think Joker's a great movie, a well-written one too, but I actually, like, it is a really great script this time around. It's, I, I mean, like, it wasn't the success that Joker was, but I think we can kind of piece together why that happened. I don't know, like, I don't, I don't know, like, and I know it came out early, but I have, I have a sneaking suspicion that a Batman movie won't have an issue with that. It, it is a Batman movie. It has an, it has an automatic uh, obstacle to overcome. But, like, if it makes the length, like, honestly, it feels like a best picture movie other than the fact that it's based on a comic book. So it's very, very, very possible. And then number 20 is Avatar 2, which is, I think, much like Batman and might be an elephant in the room. 
the first one got in, I think that it, too much time has passed. Too much time has passed. It, it will obviously get taxed. Like, obviously, it's getting taxed. Because apparently, they did some real revolutionary shit in here. But I think I just think that the legacy of Avatar is sort of tainted. It's too much time has passed. You know what I mean? Like, no one cares about Avatar anymore. Yes, we're all going to go see it. But are we? Like, are we, though? Like, is this, like... I, I, I can't tell what this movie is going like. I know it's going to get visual effects, might win, but like, is like, okay, it's going to win visual effects, but like, is it? <laughs> yeah, so obviously we're going to have to consider it, but like, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It could happen. Obviously, the first one did, but like, I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, let's go on to best director. Number one is Martin Scorsese for Kill to the Flower Moon. Dude gets nominated. Whenever he makes a movie, he gets nominated. That should probably preface that is not true. Whenever Martin Scorsese makes a movie that gets Best Picture nominated, he gets nominated. So why wouldn't he this time? Uh, if the movie doesn't come out, the movie's not a contender. He's not going to get in, but like, why would he miss? Number two, Steven Spielberg, The Fablemans. He doesn't always get in. But again, this might be so like, this is like a personal story for him. So I think he will get in. I think, I don't know. I don't really got much to say. Number three, Alejandro Gonzalez in the D2 for Bardo. I mean, listen, we, we, we all see the pattern. There's always at least one international nomination every year it seems and i have and why in the world would i like right now the most obvious bet is alejandro gonzalez in the region the dude won best director two years in a row what the fuck what what else do i need to say (laughs) that will there is an issue with though uh, apparently a cast member passed away on the set of bardo that could be a problem but unfortunately, I don't think the, the Academy will give a shit. <laughs> Number four, Damien Chazelle, Babylon. He's an Academy Award winner. All of these, everyone in my top five is an Academy Award winner. So I'm wrong. I mean, but also, you know, he, he's, it's a movie about Hollywood. I don't really see how he misses. I, get, I, I don't know. I guess he could, but I don't see it. Number five, Sam Mendes, Empire of Lights. This could miss pretty easily, but like, I don't know. This might be a very like cinematic. It, it should probably have mentioned this. It is shot by Roger Deakins and also composed by Thomas Newman. That is definitely interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. It could be a very like jerk off to cinema kind of movie. And Sam Mendes is the kind of director that could, you know, get in with that. <laughs> yeah, I think it happened. Number six, I had her in my five for a while, and that is Olivia Wilde. Don't worry, darling. I had her in for a while until I remembered. Oh fuck, she's an actress. <laughs> Actor directors, they do not, they do not mesh with the academy like at all they don't like it <laughs> they like it better when they act i guess i don't know <laughs> yeah no. uh yeah but it could happen like could it happen sure but like you know again active director that's really my only reason why i don't have it in, and that's a big reason um but yeah it, it's a psychological thriller like it might be very it might the direction might be very very showy i know nightmare alley didn't get in but also i'm 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 predicting better things for this film than nightmare alley did because like it kind of got in by the skin of its teeth number seven the daniels everything ever all at once man this like it could that everything ever all at once could actually fucking crush the nominations if it like if it makes the distance and i don't see why the daniels doesn't come along with it like other than competition honestly i might i might i might swap them in honestly them man yeah, it's possible. Again, the movie's very abstract and bizarre, so like maybe he missed, they missed because of that, but also I'm predicting a Best Picture nomination, so why would I draw one there? <laughs> Number eight, Taika Waititi next still wins. Um, I know he didn't get nominated for Jojo Rabbit, but like I would really argue, I, I really think he was number six, not Greta Gerwig. I think Taika was number six in director that year for Jojo Rabbit, and, a re- and like, you know, you had Parasite, which won, and then you had, you know, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Irishman and Joker, all of which got double digit noms. You're like, well, who do you take out? And if you fuckers think about saying Todd Phillips, fuck you, that movie led the nominations. Of course not Todd Phillips. And again, Taika is a very like, dude, the industry loves to do. He, they really do. So I, he could get in this time. This movie might be a little more slight than Jojo Rabbit. So maybe he doesn't, but he could. He's my number eight. <laughs> number nine james gray for armageddon time uh i i think that if armageddon time really is a thing james gray could come along with it again he's you know kind of needs his first nomination like he's definitely a uh, figure that industry likes so yeah it's very possible number 10 maria schrader she said she could be this year's like you know like i know people are saying this for sarah Pauly, but i think maria schrader is more likely in my opinion to be like you know this year's like female director not no i don't think like i don't know if she's gonna sweep 
obvious reasons. But um, yeah, I don't think she's going to do what, I, maybe she does. Maybe I'm about to say, I don't think she's going to do what Chloe Zhao and Jay Cambion did, but maybe she does. Maybe this movie is so unbelievably well-crafted. We don't know. Do we? <laughs> but either way, I think I don't think we're gonna get another sausage fest this year. I know my top five was, but I, you know, I don't actually think that's gonna be the case. And I think Maria Schrader and Olivia Wilde could easily be, you know, anecdotes to that. All right, at my eleven through fifteen, we got number eleven. I got James Cameron for Avatar two. I mean, James Cameron's a living legend. If what he is accomplishing truly is as revolutionary as we are hearing, then I think he could easily get a nomination with even with or without Best Picture. Honestly, do I think? It'll actually happen without picture. Not really, but if he does get into pic- but if the movie does get into picture, like him. number twelve, Ron Howard, Thirteen Lives. I, I don't, I don't know if he comes. With, I don't know if him as the director comes with the movie if it gets nominated. But he could, you know, it could have some flashy direction in, in there, you know, because it is about like you know saving a bunch of boys, thirteen of them to be specific. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible, but like I don't know. I don't. Know. I think Ron Howard has some bridges he's burned a little bit like not not because he did something shitty it's just you know he made some really shitty movies number 13 matt reeves for the batman i i think this is kind of like a todd phillips situation the batman is a contender i think matt reeves comes along with it but i don't really have that much confidence in the batman being a contender so there's that number 14 david or russell canterbury glass again like i said th- this movie could be an inevitability and david or russell could come with it but like you know and he had he was nominated for American Hustle. He was nominated for The Fighter. He was nominated for Silver Lines Playbook. And like, especially Silver Lines Playbook, it's like he didn't need to get nominated for that. They clearly like the dude, but you know, he's done some shit. Like, and I think that'll probably come to light. Probably the reason why Ansel Elgort didn't come anywhere near a nomination for West Side Story, and that could be an issue for David Russell. I just want to know how much they care. <laughs> Number fifteen, Darren Aronofsky for The Whale. I don't really think this is going to happen. I don't think The Whale needs a director nomination. It just kind of needs a coast off of actor. But, you know, despite Black Swan's underperformance, he's still got a director nom. So, yeah, this is possible still. But I doubt it. It's a play adaptation. All right, let's get to actor. You all know what my number one is. You know what my number one is. Because he's the king. Brendan Fraser, The Whale, number one for best actor. I just, I I really think this is going to happen. Like, I know it's way too early, but like, I I really think this is going to happen. Brendan Fraser is about to have a fucking like Matthew McConaughey in 2013 level year. Like, are we really going to underestimate that? Like, and, and I, I initially I was like, oh fuck, he's probably going to be Adam Sandler on Cut Gems. He's probably going to be Nicolas Cage and Pig. Wrong! Because those guys only had the one movies. Brendan Fraser is about to have fucking blow, blow up. Yeah. Brendan Fraser about to have a fucking comeback of the century right now. Because he not only has the whale, he's also going to be in the killers of Lara moon which one back in 2013 matthew mcconaughey was also in a scorsese movie for of wall street and he's gonna be in batgirl plus like a, a romantic comedy i believe too like dudes like coming back i think the narrative is so like is like a little too much on brendan fraser's side and honestly that narrative is enough to put it at number two and then you have the role he's playing he is playing a 600 pound man this movie is going to be an absolute acting showcase for the dude Remember why Brendan Fraser is the king. Number two, Coleman Domingo Rustin. If anyone's dethroning Brendan Fraser, I would say it's him. Coleman Domingo is playing Bayard Rustin, who is a civil rights activist, a and from I believe the sixties. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Coleman Domingo is in an actor that's blown up a lot in recent memory. Um, I think, and I, I remember like kind of thinking like, oh, he's like definitely gonna get an Oscar nomination by the end of the decade. But like, now he has this role. It's like, oh my God, it's going to be sooner than we expected. He could win. I buy it. I definitely buy him winning. It's, it is directed by, the movie is directed by George C. Wolf. I honestly, I, I don't know why I didn't mention it in picture. Honestly, like I probably should have mentioned this in picture, but I didn't. Um, it's also distributed by Netflix. So yeah, I, I expect good things out of this. And even if the movie falters, I think he might come with it still. Number three, Michael Fassbender, next goal wins. I like, Listen, I don't know why, but I am absurdly confident Michael Fassbender for next goal wins. I don't know why. He, for me, that performance reads to me, well, because apparently he's playing a, a soccer coach that is like a very screamy boy. But I don't know why. For me, for some reason, I'm just thinking like, oh, he could be like worst case scenario, like Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom. I, 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 don't, I can't explain my confidence. I really can't. I just really think this is going to happen with or without the movie. I don't know why. Number four, Hugh Jackman with the sun. Y'all have him higher. I understand why. I think he's going to get in. I think that he is about to have a fucking powerhouse performance. Could he win? Yeah, 
I buy it. Eight, you know, like I don't know if I buy like, the Sun overall, but I think he, you know Hugh Jackman could come with it. But I think Hugh Jackman could get in either way because I, and, like, you know, Hugh Jackman. It's like he was nominated for Lay Mid, so it's been a while. I think you know. No more time to get another Hugh Jackman nomination. Why not? Number five, kind of a risky pick. I'm going with Colin Farrell for the Banshees of Inisherin. I don't know what the Banshees of Inisherin is, like you know what it's going to be in the Oscar race, but I don't know. Colin Farrell is overdue. He had the Batman, and he's going to have 13 lives as well. He's going to have a pretty decent year. I think it's like yeah, not crazy to think he could get a nomination. Uh, number six, I got Jesse Plemons for Pillars of the Flower Moon. seven austin butler for elvis austin but i mean like i don't think this is inevitable he's playing but you know he's playing elvis presley i have heard that he absolutely crushes it and it's going to be going to Kansas. uh i don't know if he still has a bit of that disney kid uh like image on him i don't know but you know i i, I think you know he's playing elvis it, it's obviously worth considering uh but i but also, it is coming out in June, and this movie has to like absolutely blow up at the box office for me to predict them honestly. Because we saw what happened with Jennifer Hudson, we saw what happened with Taron Egerton, and even like Taron Egerton was all, so close too. That's what, that's what's bizarre about it. Like, so yeah, Butler's definitely in the running, and also, all due respect to um, Elton John, Elvis is a much larger than life figure. Number eight, Christian Bell, Canterbury Glass, David Russell, this best thing about him. Probably the only good thing about him <laughs> is that he knows how to get actors nominated. And especially when you have an actor like Christian Bale, who these images that I'm seeing of him make it look like he's kind of playing a nuts. I think you definitely get in with or without the movie. I mean, we saw it like Jennifer Lawrence got in for joy despite that movie sucking balls. And I like David Russell's movies, just the movies. Yeah, no, Bale could easily get in, especially if the movie is a contender. He's definitely getting in, I think. Number nine, Viggo Morton's in 13 Lives. Yeah, I mean, I don't, think, I don't really have too much to explain about that. I don't really need to explain that that much, do I? Like, you know, he, he could have a very, a very extremely baity role here. <laughs> no, it, it's, uh, if, I don't know if it's like a situation where like, oh, 13 lives happened, he happened. Sure. Uh, I don't know if that's the case here, but it could be the case. Uh, number 10, I got Danielle Jimenez Chacho. I definitely said that name wrong, by the way. Um, for Bardo. Uh, he is the lead in Alejandro's movie. And, uh, you know, actors tend to get nominated for Alejandro movies when they're in picture. But also, he's a bit of a no-name. Like, he's been in shit, but, like, you probably, like, have to Google it. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's possible. It's obviously in the wrong possibility. Number 11, Adam Sandler for Spaceman. I don't know if I buy this, but Adam Sandler... Like he, him as a dramatic actor is now officially just, you can't ignore it anymore after Uncut Gems, which he blew up with. Plus he also has Hustle this year. I, do, I don't believe in Spaceman overall. That's why I have so low, but I think Sandler is bound to get nominated. I don't know how soon, but he has to be because he's picking dramatic work. And I love that because he, now he's realizing if he tries, people will not tear him to shreds number 12 idris elba 3000 years of longing uh, idris elba i don't know how i feel about 3000 years of longing overall it seems like a little bit of an odd concept to be a best picture nomination i understand i'm predicting everything everywhere all at once but like that's like accessible weird george it's george miller's recent movie so it's uh, you know it's possible uh, it's first movie since mad max for your road i believe and i just elba's playing a genie i don't know if that's gonna get an oscar nomination but i just elba is overdue so you know what I'll, I'll put him in there number 13 zach efron the greatest beer run ever I'm seeing a lot of you underestimate him, and I mean, number he's number 13, I am too. But like, I don't know, like, if the movie's a thing, I don't, like, why wouldn't he get in? I get, I, I think he shed the Disney kid image, and I think now his image is, he's like the rom-com pretty boy, which, that's not a great image, but it's like, I don't know, it's, it's not like impossible for him to be an Oscar nomination from that. I don't know, I think it's definitely possible. If Chris Beer Run ever is a, is a contender, I'm putting in Zac Efron. Number 14, Diego Calva for Babylon. He is the lead, apparently. Uh, not Brad Pitt. Diego Calva, I, I, uh, I, again, no names have an issue with getting in, especially in lead. You know, like, look at, like, there was, like, in the end of the day, there was no reason why Alana Heim should have missed 
for an electric speed. Like there was nothing. There was no reason to believe she could have missed, but she did. So, and I fear that could be the same case for Diego Calva, unless they do some weird category fraud shit where they put him in supporting, which like, it sounds the same, but like it, they would. And then number 15, Joaquin Phoenix disappointment Boulevard. I don't really think it's going to happen. Disappointment Boulevard is the next Ari Aster movie. Yeah. Who, if you don't know, Ari Aster did like Hereditary and the Summer. Awesome movies, but like, you know, not the Oscars cut of tea. Um, but you know, Joaquin, it's Joaquin. It is Joaquin. I think this is going to be like, he didn't get in for come on, come on, or come close, but like, yeah, I think this will be a much bigger performance. But you know, again, Ari Aster. Let's go on to actress. Number one, Naomi Aki. I want to dance with somebody. If I had to place money right now on one actress, it is Naomi Aki. She is playing Whitney Houston. It is not like Respect. It is not like Rocket Man. It is not even like Elvis, potentially, because this movie's coming out in December. It is directed by Cassie Lemons, who directed Harriet which got Cynthia Erivo an Oscar nomination. And best of all, it's written by Anthony McCartan. If you don't know who Anthony McCartan is, let me enlighten you. He wrote a movie called Theory of Everything, which got Eddie Redmayne, best actor at Oscar. He wrote The Darkest Hour, just Darkest Hour, not the, the, which got Gary Oldman an Oscar for best actor. And then he wrote Bohemian Rhapsody, everyone's favorite. And that got Robbie Malik an Oscar for actor, deservedly. And then he wrote The Two Pokes. That didn't get any wins, but it did get Anthony Hopkins and Jonathan Price both an Oscar nomination. Why on God's green earth would I ever question Naomi Aki? She's a no-name. Fair. But again, if I had to place money on one act of winning, it's her. Number two, Margot Robbie from Babylon. She could she could be a threat. <laughs> I hear that she is like, from these test screenings, apparently she's like, oh, she could win this. And like Margot Robbie is at that age and popularity where she could win the Oscar like soon. I buy it. I totally buy it. She's like a real woman, I believe. Um, yeah, I don't really got much to say. I think she's definitely going to get nominated. Um, moving on. Number three, Carrie Mulligan, she said. I don't know how the placements are going to go between her and Zoe Kazan. Apparently, like, they're really both leads, but, like, they'll probably do some category fraud shit, you know? Like, they're not going to put them... If they both go lead, they're fucked. Like, I don't... I don't care how much you think Carrie Mulgan's like an icon. Uh, she's not. Uh, <laughs> but digress. My, right now, my theory is Carrie Mulgan leads Zoe Kazan supporting. I think no matter what, they're both getting nominated. Like, I could put, if Zoe Kazan is lead, I think she's getting nominated too. Carrie Mulgan's lead. At, if Carrie Mulgan's supporting, I think she's getting nominated there. I think both she said women are getting nominated unless they both go lead. Could she win? Fuck you. Maybe, but fuck you. <laughs> Number four, Olivia Coleman, Empire Light. I do not buy this idea that Olivia Coleman is like an awards magnet. Like, you know what I mean? I think she's just had a really great couple of years and her movies that she got nominated for, you know, the favorite and what she won for and the father and lost daughter. They had some buzz behind. Them. I don't believe that her everything that she just gets nominated for everything. I think she only gets nominated when her movies have buzz. That said, <laughs> as you, you know, I've heard, I think Empire Light is going to get buzz. So yeah. I do think she's going to get nominated. No reason to believe she won't. If the movie doesn't happen, I don't think she's locked. Again, I really don't think she's that actress. Uh, number five, Florence Pugh, Don't Worry Darling. Uh, this might be a little uh, ambitious, but like, I don't know. Florence, you know, lead women in psychological thrillers, like they get nominated, you know? I guess Rooney Mara is the exception, but Rooney Mara, for Nightmare Alley, fucking Rooney Mara? I don't know. I think it's because they have such larger than life roles. They're always screaming and shit. They're going through the fucking worst things that a human being can go through. And Florence Pugh, she's, you know, she's a little bit of a lady of the moment. I think if Dory Darling's thing, she could get in. Number six, I got Kate Blanchett for Tar. Tar is a movie by Todd Field. If you don't know who that is, he did, uh, he directed like Little Children and something else of relevance, I'm sure. I just don't want to Google it. Um, <laughs> And this in this movie, apparently Kate Blanchett is playing a composer. So that's something that's I think I don't know. I don't know why. I just really think Kate Blanchett could get nominated no matter what. Uh, I don't know what Tar is gonna be to the race. I know the Hilda Gunato tier is um composing it, so that's awesome. But yeah, I don't know. Something about that, I don't know, something about it is sticking with me. Like Kate Blanchett playing a composer. Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> and then number seven, I got Michelle Yeo for everything everywhere all at once. Girl has like I, I remember when I saw the movie, I was like, eh, like maybe. <laughs> uh, and it's growing on me. I don't think that performance is like you need to nominate it. And if the movie's not a contender, there's like no way she's getting in. But if the movie is, I do think she could come with it. My problem is, you know, there's six others that I have more confidence in. But, you know, Michelle Yeoh, she's overdue. She's the face of the movie. She's like, man, her interview, she's like fucking crying, going like, oh my God, this is the role I've been waiting for. Like, 
that, that that's good campaign right there. But again, I, I think when it comes to like putting her at number one, that's where my where my struggles come from. Number eight, Regina King, surely. She's playing a lady whose name I forgot. <laughs> Give me one second. Regina King is playing a woman named Shirley Chisholm. And it, the movie's written and directed by John Ridley, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I think that this is a possibility. She plays the first Black Congresswoman, I believe. That's what her role is, which is pretty dope. That, that's definitely a baby role. And Regina King, she's an Oscar winner. She can come back, for sure, for a nomination. Number nine, Viola Davis, The Woman King. I am going to assume most of you have her higher than me. And initially, when I saw that photo, we all saw the photo. When I first saw it, I was like, okay, yep, 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 yep. And I put her up. Then I found out who directed it. And I put her down. I, I don't know. It, it, it's obviously possible. It's Viola Davis. It's obviously a, in the realm of possibility. But that director, like, I, is this movie like an action movie? You know? Like, is that what this is? I don't think she gets in without the movie, you know? Maybe she's, I don't know. I, I don't know. Woman King for me right now is my biggest question mark. Could it happen? Absolutely. Will it happen? I, that's a, we, we have to wait and see on this one. Number 10, Jennifer Lawrence, Red, White, and Water. Jennifer Lawrence, she is like bound to get nominated eventually. Like, again, Right? And this is one, I believe she's dealing with PTSD or brain damage. I don't remember what the exact thing is, but like something. But it is A24 and, you know, their active priorities might be on like Michelle Yeoh and like Brendan Fraser. So that might be an issue. But, you know, it's something. Jennifer Lawrence, she's, you know, she's a very huge name. She can, she can come back. Number 10, I got Danielle Deadwild Till. Man, I just, that role, I don't really have much faith in Till overall. But bro, she's playing a, the mother of Emmett Till. Yikes. <laughs> That's got to be a fucking devastating performance. Problem is, you know, it's just the director of Clemency. We all remember how that turned out. Alfre Woodard should have been nominated. And she tanked so hard, it took a year for her to get something. <laughs> Literally, she got a BAFTA nomination the next year. But yeah, no, if Till's a thing, I think Danielle Deadwilder gets in because how do you not? But you know, I don't have much faith. Number twelve, Francis McDormand and Women Talking. You're, I under, I guarantee you're like, okay, dude, put her higher. Listen, <laughs> for obvious, not is it isn't just because I don't have confidence in Women Talking like you, the rest of you do. My problem is Francis McDormand. I have never seen an actress not want an Oscar nomination more in my whole life this woman is begging not to be nominated for an oscar you i guarantee you if this movie gets buzz she will she will it awesome by the way this is a great thing about her she will totally be like campaigning her co-stars so much more than her own than herself but it doesn't you know i'm predicting <laughs> i i made the joke on twitter the other day the second that francis dorman gets buzzed she's gonna find chris rock and beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Number 13, and Armand for Blonde. Oh boy, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> man, this is my number one last year. And then she and then got delayed. But bro, man, every time I hear about Blonde, I'm just like, okay, that's another step down. And now it's to a point where like I hear like that she she's like she couldn't get rid of her accent, so like she's like dubbed. Ah, she's playing, she's playing Marilyn Monroe. It's obviously worth considering. And Armis, she's not gonna also nomination eventually. But I don't think this is it, unfortunately. Number 14, Jessica Chastain, the good nurse. Jessica Chastain, she is hot off of her Oscar win for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Does this mean she's getting nominated again? Of oh, fucking course not. But I don't know. The good nurse could be, I don't know if it's going to be a thing or not. I think Eddie Redmayne might actually be a higher chance. I, didn't, I know I didn't mention him, but it's because you know, I was only doing top 15. She could. She could get nominated. I, I, I buy it. But like, you know. Probably not. <laughs> and then number 15, I'm a stone poor things. So I'm just kind of filling slots. Next. All right, best supporting actor. Number one, I got Brad Pitt for Babylon. I don't know what this role is. For all we know, it could be Brad and Bradley Cooper for Licorice Pizza. But I don't know. I, he is being mentioned in the average, like that, the thing that Paramount released, Brad Pitt's name was on it. So yeah, he might have a big enough role. I heard he is supporting, not lead. So I think he could get in. Could he win again? Not impossible. Number two, Leonardo DiCaprio, Pillars of Flower Moon. Three, I got Seth Rogen for the Fablemans. Maybe it might be still too weird to like give Seth Rogen an Oscar nomination, but like, 
I don't think it's that bizarre. And number four, I do have Paul Dano, also for the Fable Man, playing Spielberg's papa. Uh, but again, Paul Dano, great year, just hot off the Batman, which he's not getting nominated for. He should, but he won't. Uh, yeah, he's having a great year, I think. Yeah, and, and also in keeping up with patterns, I think uh, there's always going to be at least one double nomination for supporting, and I think Fable Wins could do it. Killers could also do it with Leo and De Niro, but I'm going with Rogan and Dano for now. Number five, Oh, come on, please. I got Ki Hoi Kwan for everything, everywhere, all at once. Listen, I tweeted this the other day. If anybody is Troy Kotzering, I need it to be Ki Hoi Kwan. The, like, I, I think more so than Yeo, that's just the easiest performance to get behind in that movie. You know, he's just, he has the monologue that, that makes people cry, make me cry. I, he's so lovable. He, like, he's such a lovable character. The way he flip flops, when he just goes back and forth between dimensions, I, multiverses, uh, is awesome. He has like a bit of a, he has a narrative too. Like he was going to retire before like he got this role, I believe. I, I see it. Plus he, he was short route. Not really why he would win, but like, you know, just something I want to point out. Number six, I got Robert De Niro for Killer to the Flower Moon. The dude is playing a, a, mean, a mean old boy, apparently. Uh, yeah, he could obviously get in. I think, I think he could very easily also get double nominated with uh, Leo. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to stick with the top five. That's really, De Niro's just out of there by threat. Number seven, I got, uh, Brendan Gleeson for Banshee's Venice Sheeran. He could be lead, honestly. I might be making a mistake. But, you know, if if Banshee's is a thing, I think the two f- former friends could both get nominated alongside with him. Number eight, John David Washington for Canterbury Glass. John David Washington, I don't, I, I, I've heard that, like, if anyone, like, a, a, of all the cast, if anyone in supporting actor, it's, uh, it has to be John David. You know, John David Washington, like, he's blown up. You know, not, he's Denzel's kid. He's got to, got to count for something. Yeah, I, I again, David Russell, he knows how to get his actors nominated, and I think John David could easily come with him. If, if Kenneberg lost his thing, I think John David Washington is, like, guaranteed. Number nine, I got Harry Styles for Don't Worry Darling. I don't know what this performance is going to be, I but, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, like, really going to nominate Harry Styles for actor? Like, there are certain limits where the Oscar can go. I, yeah, they could, if he's that good, then sure. I just read an interview with Robert Eggers. Apparently, he gave a fucking tremendous uh, audition for his like, Nosferatu movie. So we'll see. It's possible. Number 10, Jeffrey Wright for Rustin. Another Batman boy. <laughs> for, not for the Batman. Jeffrey Wright has been blowing up a lot in recent memory. Like, he's, like, because he's an awesome actor. I love the dude. I think he's bound, like, he's bound to get nominated eventually. And if it's similar to something I'm going to bring up in Supporting Actress, if Tomo Domingo ends up commanding the race, I think that he, he might be able to bring someone along with him, similar in a way that Will Smith brought Anjanu with him. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I think Jeffrey Wright, I think he's got to get nominated soon. <laughs> Number 11, I got Jeremy Strong for Armageddon time. Dude, you know, he's the dude from Succession. He's blown up. Everyone loves the dude. <laughs> I've heard uh, from test screenings that either he's amazing, he's the standout, and also he's like giving a stereotypical Jewish voice. Either way, that sounds good to the Academy. Uh, yeah, I think Jeremy Strong, he's probably getting in eventually. And I don't know what kind of player Armageddon time is going to be. I don't know if it's going to like commandeer a lot of acting nominations, but Jeremy Strong can come along with it. Same with Anthony Hopkins. I know you saw on the bottom here, like, oh, Anthony Hopkins, is he going to be for the sun? No, it's not going to be for the sun. It's going to be Armageddon time. I heard he's great in Armageddon time. I, I buy it, <laughs> but I, I, I just buy Jeremy Strong a little bit more just because he's, you know, kind of the shit right now. Number 13, I got Colin Firth, Empire Light. I don't know what this uh, performance is going to be. I don't even know if he might be lead. Yeah, if, if, if Empire Light really is a contender, I, I think he can come along with it. Uh, number 14, I got Willem Dafoe for four things. I just kind of have him in there just like if I see Willem Dafoe is in a movie i'm like oh what's going in there <laughs> and then we're 15 will arnett next goal wins like we already got the comedy guy out of seth rogan i don't really see will Arnett getting in but he did replace army hammer so it's worth considering i guess but it's like i don't know will arnett's one of those comedians where it's like really he's gonna get an oscar nomination like are we sure all right finally let's go and supporting actress number one i got michelle williams for the fablemans i think all of you have it at number one too and i think a lot of you think she can win and i totally agree with that she is overdue. She's playing Spielberg's mom. I mean, come on. That's got to be a big role for her. Uh, number two, I got Zoe Kazan for She Said. Like I said with Carrie, I think no matter what category these two women are in, I think they're getting in unless they both go lead. And I think Zoe Kazan, like, I don't know. I, she feels she feels bound to get nominated soon. Yeah, I think so. Uh, number three, Lily Gladstone with Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, another, you know, small named actress. But, you know, in supporting, uh, we've seen that that is very possible to the point where they could win. Uh, yeah, she's... Uh, she might have a pretty big role in 
kills the flower moon. Um, yeah, it could definitely happen. Number four, Anne Hathaway for Armageddon Time. Uh, I, I, Anne Hathaway is one of those actresses where I'm like, she has to come back soon, right? Like, she hasn't been back since her win for Les Mis. And she's playing, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 for some reason, I feel like it, she's like the likeliest actor for Armageddon Time. And she's Anne Hathaway, man. She's, she's got to come back soon, right? Come on. Uh, number five, I got Sadie Sink for The Whale. I, I, again, I'm going all in on Brendan Fraser. So I'm going to assume that she, he brings an actor with him. And Sadie Sink is playing his daughter, who's clearly going to be going through a lot of grief because of what I said about the plot. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about her. Uh, she, I, I could be overestimating the whale outside of Brendan, but we'll see. Number six, I got Vanessa Kirby for The Sun. Vanessa Kirby, man, she, she, she I mean, I, I'm a stan. Vanessa Kirby is, uh, like, you know, she's like one of those young actresses where it's like, like, she's just the best. I love her, man. And she could, she's playing Hugh Jackman's girlfriend in the movie. And I think, like, man, she could have like a really flashy role. So I'm really hopeful for that. And then number seven, I got Laura Dern for The Sun. I feel like I should have her hired the Vanessa Kirby, but I'm I can I can be biased too sometimes. Dude, she just won recently for Marriage Story, um, and she might have an even flashier role. And Kirby does the the titular son is also her son. Um, yeah, yeah, no. If the, if the son really is a thing, I think both could get it. Honestly, number eight, I got Dakota Johnson for Cha Cha Real Smooth. Uh, apparently, she's a real standout in that movie, so I'm putting her number eight. Again, I don't know what Cha Cha Real Smooth is. I don't know if she gets in without the movie. I don't know if she's that good. But, you know, I think she could get in. Yeah. Number nine, I got Elizabeth Moss for Next Goal Wins. Elizabeth Moss, she's kind of like a Nick girl because uh, of The Handmaid's Tale. I don't know what kind of performance this is. She, this could be a small role. She could be just be the love interest in Next Goal Wins. I don't know what this role is, but I just, you know, again, actresses like her don't just sign up for comedies, you know? It's got to be something here that she would accept this role. Uh, number 10, Jesse Buckley for Women Talking. I mean, I've said throughout this whole video, I don't really have faith in women talking like the rest of you do. But I've heard that she can fucking win. <laughs> and she is hot off of a nomination for The Lost Daughter, which is unexpected. I don't think that makes Jesse Buffy like, oh, she just gets in now. But um, I don't know. Maybe women talking isn't a thing, but maybe she could survive that. I don't know. May or maybe she just ends out. Number 11, I got Hong Chao with a whale. She's kind of like the name. She was close for downsizing, I believe. I don't know what her role is. She's playing the, uh, I believe, his his caretaker. Uh, Brendan Fraser's caretaker, I believe. So that could be a pretty baby role, but I'm going to assume no for the time being. Number 12, Margot Robbie for Canterbury Glass. I have heard she's more supporting than she is lead. I, barely, I have heard she can go either way, but I'm going to assume that they see her, the winning buzz for Babylon put her in supporting. Um, where she could get double nominated. I could buy that. I really do. Um, like I said, Deborah Russell knows how to get actors nominated. Number 13, they got Gene Smart for Babylon. I have heard she has a pretty decent role. Uh, not a big one, but like a pretty decent one. She's playing a critic. And Gene Smart, she is kind of like a woman of the moment kind of thing. Thanks to Hacks, where she will likely win another Emmy. Yeah, she could get nominated for this if Babylon really is a huge thing. Number 14, they got Rooney Mar for Women Talking. I think Buckley can happen with or without the movie, but I think Rooney only happens with the movie. That's just my instinct right now. And then number 15, I got Will Be Goldberg for Till. She's playing the grandmother for Emmett Till, I believe. Yeah, that could be, uh, you know, Will Be Goldberg being got the Oscars. Yeah, that's possible. All right, that's it. Uh, that's the last I'm going to be doing of Oscar predictions for a while. I only did this because, I don't know, I don't know why I did this, honestly. I could have not done it, but I did it. All right, like, subscribe, whatever. I don't care. No, no, what? No, I do care. I care greatly. Give me a kiss.